Hey, hey, hello again. So um, uh, today I'm going to present another work. Uh, it's actually recent work. It's called uh, Models Genesis. And we have a uh, two version. So this title is for conference version. And our journal version title is directly Models Genesis. And uh, the conference version wins the Young Scientist Award and the journal version wins the Meta IA Best Paper Award. I could uh, introduce you uh, about this work briefly. So first, it's another story about deep learning in medical image analysis. We know deep learning is very powerful in imaging task, and uh, uh, it also adopted to many medical spe uh, specialties. But the limit, one of the limitation is that it demands a massive number of annotation. So here I could uh, introduce uh, what I mean by annotation here. So for example, you have some uh, chest X-ray. Uh, so in order to train the deep model, you, the human expert have to identify by himself where it's the disease and uh, the location and the size and uh, the disease name uh, for the model to train. So this annotation is uh, serve as a supervision to train the model as a back propagation. So, uh, to train the deep model, we need a huge amount of this kind of annotation, which in medical image, uh, imaging, it's not very easy to obtain uh, so many annotation for each individual disease. So the question we try to answer is how to develop a cost-effective deep learning algorithm for those diseases that without so many annotated data. One very popular uh, solution is called uh, transfer learning. The idea is, okay, so the medical domain, we don't have so many annotation. So we try to learn the, pre-train the model from massive number of uh, other images from other data, and then uh, transfer its uh, knowledge and uh, what we call the, the weight in the model to the target model. So here, the pre-trained model, we call it a, a proxy model. So after proxy model learn from huge amount of, lab, uh, of images, then it can transfer the model, uh, transfer the weight to the target model, which can uh, solve a lot of uh, different uh, problems. So you can say it's a uh, transfer learning from one domain to another domain. So the current very, a uh, popular uh, model is called the ImageNet based uh, transfer learning. The idea is first uh, I, the pre-trained, uh, the proxy task is to train the model in the ImageNet. ImageNet is a, a large number of, a la large, large data set which has the annotate, a uh, natural data set have a uh, uh, human annotation, sorry. Okay, so this is what we try to do. We want to pre-train the model and make it beneficial to other tasks. So we have a limitation for the current ImageNet model compared with we proposed, we call the model genesis. Because first, ImageNet is trained on natural image, while model, our model's genesis is directly trained on medical image. So we assume that the domain game gap between uh, natural to medical uh, image transfer learning uh, compared with the med directly medical to medical uh, transfer learning will be small, uh, will be larger. So we prefer uh, transfer from medical to medical domain. Another benefit is the image net is uh, formed in 2D. You see all the natural images are 2D. Therefore, the pre-trained model are also in 2D. While most uh, dominant uh, uh, medical modalities uh, forming 3D, for example, CT, MRI, and uh, even ultrasound. So we assume that the 3D imaging task should be directly solved in 3D. Uh, moreover, uh, imaging that uh, are the most important, the imaging that demands a huge amount of annotation effort, but we pre-train the model genesis with the self-supervised learning which means we don't need any human uh, manual annotation, expert annotation. 
And I will also review some existing work for the 3D pre-trained model. So ImageNet is 2D. So there, there are also existing 3D model. For example, uh, this is released by Google. It's called uh, i3D. So this model are in 3D because it's learned from the uh, image video. So we, we see the time frame, it's the Z uh, direction. So that's why the model is a 3D. And it demands 240,000 annotated video to build this model, preacher model. Another example is called a Nifty Net. Nifty Net is directly pre-trained on medical images uh, on very spe specific tasks, for example, uh, some organ segmentation. So that means it also needs uh, a large amount of annotation. So it needs 90 annotated subjects, patients. And the most recent uh, uh, model is called Medical Net. It's uh, released by Tencent. It's a Chinese company. And uh, this model pre-trained by the uh, segment image segmentation task, which I introduced the last talk. And uh, this to build this model also need uh, like more than 1,000 annotated subjects. Now the question comes, since the annotated data is so difficult to obtain, and while uh, uh, at the meantime, uh, un un annotated medical images come every day in the hospital. So can we utilize the large number of available chest CT uh, images without uh, such a systematic annotation to train the proxy model, sorry, here should be proxy or source model that can yield a high performance target model via transfer learning. So here's the problem we try to solve. We want to use the uh, model directly learn from data itself instead of learn from the manual annotation. Probably you can think about how you could uh, do this. And this is our suggestion. We devised a framework. It's, uh, it's based on the image restoration task. Give an or original image. We first deform this image in some way and then feed this image into the uh, network, deep, deep network, and uh, let the model learn to restore the original image. So here, the input is the deformed image, and the output should be sh supposed to recover the original image, and we compute the loss between the model prediction and the uh, original image. So here the network, we use the UNET shape, which I uh, uh, talked the last time. It's a have an encoder and a decoder, and also the skip connection in between. So in this framework, the most important part is how to, uh, how to uh, create this kind of uh, image transformation because all other components are already available. So in this paper, we, we suggest uh, four image transformation we call non-linear uh, local shuffling, order cutout and inner cutout. So I will introduce you one by one. First, the non-linear transformation. Uh, if you have any question, you can always interact with me. So here I introduce you nonlinear transformation first. Yeah, so the Huntsville unit value in CT scan have uh, uh, for different organ, air or bone have a certain range. This uh, give us the opportunity that a CT scan itself naturally come with the pixel wise annotation. This is a little bit difficult to understand. Maybe you, uh, you need to think about it. Is this true or not? So each pixel, it have a physical meaning. It's not like a natural image. So today I wear a brown, brown clothes and tomorrow I wear red, but the somatic is still the clothes. But in CT scan, it's not. If the CT scan, the intensity value in this range, it have to be the lung or 
uh, if if it, or I can say in another way, if it's a long, then the intensity value have to in this certain range. So this means CT scan itself naturally come with pixel wise annotation. So if you can predict the intensity value, uh, it somehow means the model understand what is the object. Correct. Okay. So we apply nonlinear transfer tra translating function to CT image. By restore the original CT value, the model need to learn from the organ appearance, including shape and the intensity distribution. And the second the transformation we call the uh, local pixel shuffling. We randomly shuffle pixel position within small range and then let the model learn to recover the original image. By doing so, the model must learn the organ texture and the local boundary, because you can see the boundary is messed up here. But if you train the model to restore the original smooth boundary, it learns the uh, local boundaries and also texture as well. We also propose outer cutout and inner cutout where some small region are hidden in the model by random number in order cutout uh, to restore the original image, the model must uh, learn some global, uh, global geometry and uh, also spatial layout. At the same, same time, in inner cutout, the model must learn some local continuities of the object in order to uh, make it uh, make the object continue. So, uh, so this is the overview of our framework. We uh, innovate some good uh, transformation to help the model learn to learn the image representation. And here it's the sports study about each individual uh, transformation, how good it is. And uh, here we use uh, five different uh, application, including two classification application and, a, and a three segmentation task. So here you can see nonlinear local shuffling in the cutout, order cutout, and also an identical my mapping. Identical mapping means uh, you input its original image, output the still original image. So the model doesn't need to do anything. And eventually we compare this individual string, uh, scheme with the combined scheme, which means we uh, use this different uh, transformation like a randomly pick up or some of them and uh, combine them together. So here the conclusion we find is combined the scheme can lead to more robust performance compared with each individual one. So you see here the uh, red bar is always uh, uh, outperform, the mean value always outperform, and some of them are even outperform the second best significantly. So here, let me uh, review our, our four uh, transformation. So the nonlinear, we try to allow the model learn the organ appearance, and the local pixel shuffling, we allow the model to learn organ texture and the local boundaries. And the other cutout to learn the spatial layout and the ge uh, global geometry, and the inner cutout to learn the local continuum. So each of them have a, a specific perspective. And uh, all together, we found that it uh, leads to really robust uh, pre trained model. So here, the message, take home message is uh, image restoration is a promising is promising to help deep model to learn comma or ge uh, generic uh, image representation. So, yeah. So our conclude uh, our contribution biggest contribution is at the very first time we introduce uh, we develop uh, the generic uh, pre-trained three D models. So we call it uh, models genesis. And uh, when you use model genesis, the encoder can be used for target uh, classification task. For example, give you an image, you put it into the encoder, you tell me this image, the uh, 
the lesion is a benign or benign or malignant. And encoder decoder together can be used for target task like segmentation. For example, you give me an image and segment the lesion for me. And in our paper, as said, we use five uh, user, user case, a real application, including two uh, classification tasks, which we use the lung nodule false positive reduction. So give an image, tell me this is a lung nodule or it's a false positive. And a PE false positive, PE is a pulmonary embryo. And the three segmentation application, we want to segment lung nodule from CT, we want to segment liver, and we want to segment brain tumor from, uh, from the MI image. So here you can see uh, this target task, the, the modality is in MRI and the others are in CT. Now it's uh, just to show the result. We have a uh, four observa major observation. First is we you if you pre-train, if you use our model Genesis as a pre-training initialization, it will for sure outperform 3D model learn from scratch. So as said, here the red bar is the uh, model's genesis, pre-training, uh, fine-tuning model's genesis. And uh, all this uh, three bar is uh, learning, learning from scratch. So learning from scratch actually have a lot of way to learn because the scratch you can initialize in different uh, uh, distribution. The weight can be diff different distribution. It can be uniform, can be Gaussian, Gaussian distribution, can be other even fancier distribution. Okay, so our, our conclusion is so whatever distribution, ma mathematical distribution, you initialize the uh, weight, uh, you are, if you pre-train in our way, it will always give you significant outperform out out the result. And the second model genesis surpass, surpass, uh, existing pre-trained 3D model. As I uh, reviewed before, there are quite some work uh, in the pre-trained 3D model, but uh, they are all uh, supervised. They need a lot of uh, annotation. And here, the good thing is, you see the model's genesis uh, is to use a zero human supervision. It can actually perform uh, better and uh, most times significantly better than the uh, pre existing pre-trained model uh, pre-trained in a supervised way. So you can see here the uh, same color means the performance equivalent uh, sig uh, in significantly, uh, equ no significant difference. And uh, you can see in this application, model's genesis is significantly outperform any other counterparts. And in this application, uh, I3D achieve a similar, a similar performance to model genesis. So apart from uh, compare with this existing model uh, pre-trained in a supervised way, we also investigate some uh, good algorithm like a self-supervised algorithm uh, devised for self in a self-supervised self manner. So including denoising, uh, inpainting, uh, jigsaw, deep clustering, and uh, patch shuffling and the Ruby skewed. This is the most uh, recent work. And uh, these, all these uh, baseline are self-supervised learning because to train this, you don't need a human expert annotation uh, either. So for example, I give you an example of a denoisy. Denoisy is very similar to our framework. It's uh, basically give you an original image. You add some uh, random noise to it and then train the model to restore the original image. So you can see you don't need a human annotation. What you need is a, a learn, a figure out a way to directly learn from the original data. All right, so in this slide, the, uh, the conclusion is uh, clearly uh, stated. The model genesis outperform existing um, pre trained model, pre trained 3D model. Okay, 
Then the, another observation, which is also very important, is annotation if, if uh, efforts, how many uh, annotation efforts can be reduced by you using fine tuning our model genesis. So this is very important because, uh, as I said, uh, for the proxy task, you don't need uh, human annotation, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, target task you don't need. Target task, we still need uh, uh, collect the annotation for specific uh, disease. So what we try to do is uh, pre-train and transfer uh, knowledge to the target model. And the target model is still learned in a supervised manner. Okay, so here the slides tell you how many supervision annotation can be reduced by using our, can be benefit uh, from the uh, model's genesis. Here you can see the red curve is model genesis and the, the green curve is the uh, learn from scratch. The X is the number of uh, labeled data in the target task. And the Y is the performance. So you can see uh, if you learn 3D model from scratch, as you collect more label, more data, the performance will increase. But if you use our model genesis, it will increase more quickly and uh, achieve the comparable performance uh, with very little amount of annotated data. So here is how we demonstrate how many annotation can be reduced. For example, random initialization, you can achieve this performance. And uh, uh, you can achieve this performance with 70% of labeled data, but you only need 30% labeled data to achieve same performance with model genesis. So that means more than half of the annotation effort can be reduced. So this is how to interpret this result. And similarly, we re repeat this uh, experiment on other four applications, as I showed here. and the uh, message pretty clear, uh, pretty consistent. So for each application, uh, initial fine tuning our model genesis can for sure reduce the annotation and how many annotation can be reduced it depends on the target task, how difficult it is or how many data is needed. So it depends, but it's still, uh, the gist is the same. Uh, it can reduce the annotation effort uh, by a large margin. The last experiment, it's, a, it's about a 3D model and a 2D model. As I said, a 2D model, we have a really, really strong baseline, which is called ImageNet-based transfer learning. So which I put here, it's a red. It's very competitive uh, compared with the uh, 2D. You learn 2D model, learn from scratch. You can see ImageNet models always outperform. But the problem here is in 3D. We are, we are working on the uh, medical imaging task in CT and uh, MRI modality. So this is in 3D. If you use a 2D, it will compromise, it will compromise the performance because you have to do it slice by slice. And you just basically ignore the relation between the slice. So uh, this is our hypothesis our 3D model should outperform 2D and uh, the experiment result supported this hypothesis. So if you look at this uh, graph, it is NCS means uh, nodule segmentation, segmenta uh, nodule, long nodule segmentation. Okay, you can see here, here are the 2D, 2D learn from scratch. This is 3D learn from scratch. It's clearly like a 3D can, can uh, even learn from scratch can beat 2D models. And uh, here is a 2D image net. And uh, we have uh, models genesis in 3D. You can see uh, the red bar is always outperform the yellow, yellow bar by a, lar a large margin for all the applications. So here we, we see that model genesis consistently 
outperform any 2D approach. Let me show you some uh, another 2D approach, which we call it a 2.5D approach. So here the idea is a 2.5D still we use the 2D model, but uh, we extract the slice differently. So 2D model, you have RGB channel, right? So uh, uh, conventional approach is you uh, extract uh, by the neighborhood. So one, two, three slice based. And uh, there's uh, another good work, it's called a 2.5D, uh, also orthogonal uh, way to extract. So this become your three channel input to the uh, 2D model. The benefit of this kind of input is it's consider the spatial uh, information uh, compared with this one. So you can see it's a consider uh, information in the y direction, x direction, and the z direction. But the problem is uh, still only the information is uh, uh, learned only these three slides. It's uh, still not as powerful as the 3D volume based uh, information. So you basically give every information to the model. So the, the uh, performance given here. So you can say uh, 2D and a 2.5D and a 3D. You can see 2.5D, sometimes they outperform 2D, sometimes the same as 2D. But uh, 3D volume-based input can always outperform either 2D slice-based input or 2.5D orthogonal uh, input. So according to these two results, we can conclude what we can conclude is 3D problem should be solved in 3D directly, but uh, properly. Properly means we need a model genesis. If we don't have a model genesis, it might be outperformed by 2D image net pre training. I can show you here, um, like this one. So if you don't, uh, if you learn model, gen uh, if you learn uh, 3D model from scratch, it's possibly outperformed by the 2D ImageNet uh, pre-trained model, you can see here. So that's why 3D problem should be solved in 3D directly, but uh, properly, we need, uh, we need the pre-trained model. So that's the idea. All right, so that's uh, all the highlight of our uh, uh, experiment. We have a four, uh, so our conclusion, our contribution is the first time we introduce a generic, generic means uh, this model can be used in multiple purpose of target task. And autodidactic, uh, it means uh, self-supervised. We don't need uh, any human supervision, sorry. And the 3D, 3D is very important because uh, uh, we are the first one to build this kind of uh, powerful model in 3D way. So here list all the four uh, observations from our study. For the future work, <clears throat> so you can see the observation is very clear and powerful, but uh, what we found is if you pre-train the model uh, on the chest and the CT, uh, chest area and the CT modality, you will find that this kind of pre-trained model will mostly benefit for the target task, which is also in the chest area and also in the CT scan. So it will have some benefit to the other modality or other organ region, but uh, it will not as uh, powerful as uh, within domain uh, transformation. So this motivates us to uh, think about how to extend our model's genesis to different uh, uh, specialties. Uh, for example, uh, for the future work, we we plan to collect a lot of uh, uh, CT uh, X-ray images in the internet, and these images contains the different human bodies. And we, in this case, we build a, we collect a, a huge amount of X-ray database and uh, train the train the Genesis X-ray on on top of this. And we assume this Genesis X-ray will specifically benefit for the target task in X-ray modality. Same, similarly, uh, we want to build the Genesis CT and the Genesis MRI, which we all call this kind of model 
modality oriented uh, model, pre-trained model, which means you train on this modality, it will uh, benefit the most on this uh, target task in this modality. At the same time, we want to train the organ oriented uh, genesis. For example, we don't care what kind of modality, uh, modality you have. We want to collect all the medical images online, which is uh, belong to the chest uh, lung area. So it can be chest, it can be CT, it can be MRI, it doesn't matter. We collect them together and uh, train the model on the chest area and uh, then result in a pre-trained model we call the Genesis lung. So Genesis lung supposed to be most powerful for the target task uh, happened in the chest area. And the same thing happened in the liver. We want to collect a different modality of liver organ and the brain. So all these uh, series, we call it uh, uh, organ oriented model. So we build this model to benefit for the target task in specific organ area. So you can see that's a lot of work. So the whole, we, we uh, invite the researchers around the world to contribute to this effort. And we hope the model genesis can achieve the holy grail, which are uh, effective uh, across disease organ uh, data set and the modalities. So this is our uh, whole picture of uh, this project. Uh, of course, we make this uh, work open science. So you guys can always visit this uh, page and we uh, provide uh, the implementation for both Keras and the PyTorch version. So whatever you are familiar with, you can always play with it. And as uh, at the same time, we provide a lot of uh, uh, material to help you to understand the idea and uh, help you to reproduce our result. It have a paper, a code, slides, and a poster, and also talk and blog. So we have a several announcement. Uh, if you want to use our models genesis, uh, we are really welcome to uh, to it and. Uh, our model genesis uh, implementation code is released and the pre-trained code also released. So you see, we released the uh, pre-trained code in PyTorch as well as uh, in Keras. So you can always download online and uh, uh, you don't have to pre-train it. That's the beautiful thing. You don't have to pre-train on your uh, huge amount of data. We do it for you and you uh, download it and you can use this pre-trained model for your task, target task. So it's uh, like, uh, uh, directly, it's uh, it's like a tool. So the uh, the dirty job we already done, and uh, and the recently the model genesis uh, accepted by a journal, and also a good news is the model genesis uh, uh, we win we using model genesis to so win the uh, challenge in liver tumor segmentation, uh, we're the top one, and also you can download the. Uh, pre-trained model that win this uh, challenge online uh, in our page. So basically we have uh, released everything. And uh, I would like to thank uh, all the authors and uh, lab mate for this project. You can see this is a huge project and uh, it's impossible uh, to do it like uh, alone or uh, several people. So I will have a big thank to all the, all the people. And uh, yeah, one more, one more sentence. We, prov we provide a pre-trained 3D model to the research community. Um, that's the key statement. And uh, I'm ready for any question from you. Thank you.